Hey everyone, my name is Sakairis, welcome back to the channel, and today's video is one that I do not make lightly at all. I understand perfectly well that YouTube has been removing videos about this exact topic as part of their whole massive bullshit cover-up. Yeah, I mean, just from that sentence alone, you can tell that this entire situation is just absolute insanity from beginning to end, and hopefully this video, even if it does end up getting demonetized, will stay up as an accurate timeline of basically this entire situation from, like, like I said, beginning to end. I've gone through hours of videos, dozens of tweets to try and piece together an accurate timeline of what happened here. Before we start the video, make sure to like and subscribe and all that. I have a feeling that I'm gonna need it coming up. And without further ado, let's get into the drama and cover-up surrounding the Act Man, Quantum TV, and YouTube themselves. Quantum TV is a small YouTuber who, until very recently, was known for two things. His reviews of televisions and falsely copyright striking channels. In fact, this is something that has been going on for years, which is an important detail going forward. A lot of people have been making videos about this topic for a lot longer than he would like you to think they have. However, none of these controversies really jumped Quantum TV into the mainstream or into headline news. That is, until sometime in late February, early March, when Quantum Quantum TV decided to stray from his usual formula and upload a review of Elden Ring that contained just some really bad takes and straight up lies, including saying that Elden Ring had been delayed for four years, which is not true at all. So in response, another even smaller YouTuber named Mischief, a 17 year old kid with a few thousand subs at the time, so me but British, then made a video addressing these bad takes sometime around early March, which for some reason incited Quantum to threaten legal action against him for using stolen footage. Also, this message is signed as Q, which is like fucking hilarious and also maybe a bit of foreshadowing. Mischief then took the video down rather than fight the copyright claim because I would assume that he didn't want to deal with all the legal problems that this imposed, which I perfectly understand. I did the exact same thing earlier this year, actually around the same time, when a video of mine also got a false copyright claim. Except that in my case, I wasn't warned and I just got the strike anyways, so L for me, I guess. Anyways, this caused a bunch of other YouTubers like Griffin Gaming and Review Tech USA to make videos about Quantum TV because obviously threatening legal action against a 17 year old for essentially no reason gets people's attention. This started a spiral of baby raging on Quantum's part and more threats of legal action against anyone that made a video about him. This guy is going around to every YouTuber he can fucking find saying he's saying I'm violating YouTube terms of service and he's bullying me. He's playing the fucking victim. He also claimed that Mischief was orchestrating these content creators to make videos attacking him, despite there being evidence that Mischief actively discouraged people from doing this. Now, despite the fact that I'm going to be talking about Quantum for essentially the next two and a half pages of this script, I don't want to show a whole lot of footage from his channel because, one, I don't want a false copyright strike when the previous one was lifted just a couple of weeks ago, and two, Quantum keeps deleting these videos because he keeps getting backlash on them, making them very hard to find. Hmm, I wonder why. Quantum then made two more videos about quote-unquote review Elden Ring, which contains some bad takes, including messages to the community such as, kill, kill yourself, yourself, and you sound like abuse, abuse victims. victims. He also tries to pass off people going after him as being due to his bad Elden Ring takes, instead of being due to his rampant threats against other YouTubers. In particular, one YouTuber that he went after, Review Tech USA, made a point that Quantum was actually ban evading on YouTube for a previous channel, as well as bringing up many old homophobic tweets and Facebook quotes, which which usually I wouldn't care about. I don't really get the whole thing about canceling people over something they said on social media 10 years ago, but the dude literally makes references to like the Pulse nightclub shooting and tries to justify death wishes, which is like really fucked up. Quantum would then later claim that his Twitter account had been hacked and that the hackers were the ones spreading these hateful messages, but as we'll see later, the credibility of this claim is uh, very debatable. In the meantime, our main character enters. Actman made a video called The Worst Elden Ring Hot Takes on April 10th, which briefly addressed the Quantum TV controversy at the beginning and end of Quantum segment, as well as also addressing Quantum's terrible takes on Elden Ring, which if you want to know, Quantum basically complains that the game is 
too hard, which is literally what From Software games are known for, as well as just mocking the Elden Ring fanbase and being a jerk in general. Actman isn't even mean or anything, he even makes concessions, and mostly just calls Quantum out for being a dick to the Elden Ring fanbase, which, as previously said, he really was. Also, sometime around here, Review Tech USA was streaming about Quantum's old racist tweets, and the Twitter account, which may I remind you was supposedly hacked, was deleted on stream. Hmm. And I should also mention that Quantum's response to Review Tech calling him out for this was basically just to call him a pedophile, so yeah. When you think that you're cool. Quantum made a video on April 23rd called Quantum TV is under attack by the Great Value Avengers, which not only is a terrible title, but does a great job of trying to wane the controversy off of him without ever really explaining what the controversy is about. He claims that people are making fake YouTube accounts under his name and commenting things under videos to make him look bad. And to be fair, he actually does show a clip from a stream by Mischief where he actually does fine and ban a fake account. But the things that are making him look bad are on Twitter and Facebook. Facebook, not really YouTube comments, which makes me very suspicious of Quantum's motives here. He also claims he'd been fighting cyber attacks, once again to dissuade people from finding out about all the racist and homophobic shit he said in the past. Actman would then go on to make a video later that same day, officially coming out that Quantum TV had, in the time since the Elden Ring Hot Takes video had been posted, filed a false copyright claim on it. Quantum claimed that the footage from his videos used in Actman's videos did not fall under fair use, and claimed that Actman was stealing his videos. However, this takedown request was, and this is very important, rejected by YouTube on the 12th, only two days after the video had been posted, meaning this all happened fairly quickly after it went live. What's interesting here is that Quantum then tries to blame YouTube, saying that they're the ones who advised him to take down the video in the first place, which doesn't make sense to me. Why would they say to take down a video, and then when he requests to take down the video, not do it? My theory here here is that Quantum maybe lied to the YouTube support person about the scope of the so-called copyright infringement present in his videos, and probably tried to make it sound a lot more severe than it actually was, but that's just my theory on it, that's not a, an actual fact or anything. Act then continues his video, basically diving into the same rabbit hole that we've been going down so far. I won't get into it too much because he basically says all the same stuff that I've been saying here. He states in his video that his end goal is to get Quantum removed from YouTube, bringing up his old homophobic social media posts, copyright abuse, and a clip from a now-deleted video where he calls Lenny Kravitz's daughter a half-breed, which proves that his views aligned with those of the supposed hackers. And once again, this is very important for later, this is literally on video. You cannot blame this clip on hackers. This is an actual video that Quantum posted to his own YouTube channel. Actman is clearly, and should I mention understandably, upset throughout this video video and threatened at the end to take legal action against Quantum if he tried to false copyright claim him again. On April 26, Quantum posted a response to the Actman's video, which is a little unhinged, if I'm being honest. First of all, he admits that he reached out to Actman's mother on the 23rd, presumably right after the video was made. Not only that, but he claims the reason for this is apparently that he was trying to reach out to Actman, which he claims is because he couldn't get a hold of him any other way, despite the fact that in the video, he literally shows screenshots of them talking to each other on Discord. Really, you couldn't get a hold of him any other way. He's a public figure, he has like one and a half million subscribers, and you have a decent amount yourself. If you want to get a hold of him, there are easier ways to do it that doesn't involve stalking and vaguely threatening family members that have nothing to do with the situation, even if it was on public record, like Quantum claims, it's just weird. He also claims that Actman threatened to murder him, which comes from a tweet where the Actman is talking about how Quantum reached out to his mother and threatened his family. However, if you'll actually read the tweet, the context is about him defending his home from a guy who we know has not already pulled his mother's phone number, but has also implied that he knows where Actman lives. I do actually agree with Quantum's point here that maybe the last part of this should
shouldn't have been said, but considering all the shit that Quantum has done, I think we can give Actman the benefit of the doubt for maybe overreacting a little bit on this one. Quantum also takes multiple statements from Actman out of context, including a complete meme tweet where he says, Act bros unite for the honor of Act mother. Basically another reference to the fact that Quantum called Actman's mother and tried to spin this as a, quote, call for terrorist action. <laughs> I, I really can't make this up. And once again, he tries to pull the card that one guy, this time allegedly Actman, is rallying other content creators into attacking him, when in reality, people have been addressing this controversy for well over a month before Actman made his video. He also shows a pretty long audio recording from the phone call with Actman's mother in this video. You can't hear what she's saying because the video was taken from a security camera instead of recorded on the actual phone, but it's pretty easy to infer what she's talking about. I will concede here that, despite sounding like a straight-up Batman villain at points, he actually handles the phone call pretty decently well, despite just straight-up lying at several points. Do you have video proof of me saying anything against these people? Yeah, we, we literally do. <laughs> it's Lena Kyle, which is Lenny Kravitz's daughter, like a half-breed, basically. The funniest part to me is that he still thinks in this video that this is all happening because of his review of Elden Ring. A starting point does not equal probable cause. People are making videos about you because you threatened to copyright strike a 17-year-old because he hurt your ego. The casing may hold the bullet, my friend, but in the end, it's the bullet that kills all the same. The rest of the video is basically just lies about the allegations. I won't go into it that much. It's not that important. Review tech Tech USA then made a follow-up video. Everything that he said in that uh, has pretty much already been said here, and several YouTubers, including Review Tech and Quantum, exchanged the occasional video for a while. Everything about this controversy seemed to slow down for about the next month until. In Actman's April 23rd video, the final chapter is entitled, The Nightmare is Over, question mark. However, unfortunately, it appears that, as of the last week or so, the nightmare has only just begun. In fact, I don't think anyone could have predicted how bad this situation would really get. On May 31st, Actman posted to Twitter that YouTube had gone through a quote-unquote thorough investigation of Quantum, but that no action would be taken. He goes on to outline how this message would affect YouTube, seen all this before, blah blah blah, and ends the message with the phrase, this is the dark age of YouTube in bold lettering. On June 2nd, three days later, Actman posted the third and final video in the Quantum TV trilogy titled, The Dark Age of YouTube, Quantum TV Found Innocent. This video was up for five days, before it was taken down for violating the community guidelines. Now, you may think that this may have something to do with the content of the video, right? Obviously, it was a pretty influential inflammatory piece of YouTube and Quantum TV, maybe he'd said something in the video that nudity and sexual content that's what it was taken down for. For a very quickly shown image of a cucumber photoshopped in front of Quantum's face. I don't believe this shit for a minute. Shortly after, two other completely unrelated videos, one about Cyberpunk 2077 and one about Call of Duty World at War, were both age-restricted and were switched to limited ad runs. Actman tried to appeal this, but the appeal was rejected within 30 minutes of Actman submitting it. At the same time, a stream highlight about Quantum from Review Tech U USA was also flagged and run with limited ads. Interestingly, Ackman laid the blame for this on YouTube, not Quantum, saying that there is severe corruption happening at YouTube. Just nine hours after making this post, YouTube removed Ackman from the partner program and demonetized every video on his channel. Ackman followed this up with a tweet saying specifically not to harass YouTube or Quantum and to take action responsibly by using the hashtag justice for Ackman. In some more recent evidence, in this case that was only posted on Twitter a few hours ago as of me recording this, Actman apparently posted a now-deleted tweet on June 6th saying that he was going to dox members of the YouTube staff as well as other content creators, which YouTube pointed out in their response to Act's post about being demonetized. However, if you look at the original tweets, it's very clear that Actman is satirizing the whole situation and making fun of YouTube, not making actual threats. It's very interesting how when Quantum actually commits illegal acts in real life, he doesn't get punished for it, even after a supposed thorough investigation by YouTube. But when Actman makes a joke about it on Twitter, 
he gets his entire career thrown in a sewer. Just for proof, here is a list of some of Quantum's community guideline and policy violations. Hate speech against race, nationality, sexual orientation, and immigration status as defined by the hate speech policy segment of YouTube's guidelines on violent or dangerous content. Posting content that mocks survivors of domestic abuse as defined by YouTube's guidelines on harassment and cyberbullying, and misusing reporting, flagging, complaint, dispute, and appeals processes as defined by Section 7 of the Permissions and Restrictions sections of YouTube Terms of Service. Oh, and Banavision, can't forget that one. These are all things that can easily be found out from a quick Google search, so why YouTube chose to ignore this is very frustrating. I won't say that the community guidelines are perfect and that I agree with them 100% of the time, because I'll be honest, I don't, but they are there for a good reason. I should also mention that Ackman's brother got quote-unquote doxxed while he was streaming on Twitch, and Ackman reacts pretty seriously to this, but if you read the text, it actually looks like the guy is a harmless troll, and even advises Ackman's brother to get get public records of their information removed so that they won't be contacted so easily. Despite this, it's crazy that after all this evidence, the real villain of the story wasn't Quantum at all, at least not according to Actman. I'm less certain that Quantum has nothing to do with this to be honest, but it's still absolutely on YouTube for demonetizing Actman's channel for essentially no reason, as well as ignoring the overwhelming evidence against Quantum TV. This doesn't feel like a mistake or even a failure on YouTube's part. This seems to me at least like an act of mal Alice for not falling in line. Thankfully, it seems the backlash on this is pretty severe, with massive creators like Keemstar and Critical getting in on hashtag justice for Ackman. Hopefully, YouTube will recognize their mistake and reinstate Ackman's channel, as well as hopefully ban Quantum. Losing that much income, especially when you've done nothing wrong except trying to expose injustices in a community that you deeply care about, must be very hard. And Ackman, if you're out there watching this video by any stroke of luck, I wish you the best. And for all of you watching at home, I hope that this video has been able to provide a clear and mostly complete timeline of the whole Quantum TV, YouTube, and Ackman controversy. I hope that someday I can make an updated video saying that the whole situation has been resolved peacefully, but for now, my name is Sakairis, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. By the way, I'm sure I don't need to say this, I'm sure I'll be fine, I'm not nearly as big as some of the content creators that are getting their videos removed because of this, but if this video does get removed, you guys have my full permission to download and re-upload this. I mean, not if the video is still up, obviously, but if it does get taken down, I, I give you guys permission to go do that, okay? Cool. See ya.